Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Manchester United FM 21 beta save. In today's episode we've come back a little bit earlier than I was planning to do when I was looking at the fixtures. We have made it through to the League Cup semi-final so that is going to be today. Uh, Leicester City are the opposition. We're also going to play Sheffield United away from home in the Premier League. But there is a couple of interesting little approach to sign players that I want to take a look at. Gianluigi Donnarumma, he does not want to sign a new contract at AC Milan. They have transfer listed him for this reason at £49 million. Unfortunately for us, he's not actually willing to talk to me yet, which is a little bit disappointing. I think I might try and place a few things into the media to try and unsettle him and see if he'd be more willing to talk to me at that point. But he is someone who I'm highly, highly interested in. 21 years old, he is already better than David De Gea. If we just take a look at the polygon here, he's in green, David De Gea is in blue, mentally better, com communication better, eccentricity is negligible, Ariel is better for David De Gea, distribution is better for uh, Donnarumma, same shot stopping, better physical, slightly slower, and if we go to the attribute screen you can really see the key difference, mentally he is just worlds above, technically he trades blows with them and is better in a lot of important areas, particularly aerial reach, command of area and the communication. Physically, it's neither here nor there, but I think he does edge him and everything bar speed. He's great. He's absolutely fantastic. And if we can get him on a potential approach contract, I am more than interested in that. The next season, David De Gea will likely be sold and we'll be able to cash in and get a decent little fee for him. The other player is, of course, Memphis Depay. I'm sure everybody's seen Donnarumma and Memphis Depay. But I've already actually approached the sign and he is interested in doing it. It's just whether I actually want to go through with the transfer or not. He's an absolutely phenomenal player. And I, I think you'd be stupid not to want to sign him. My, my only thought is, where is he actually going to play in our squad? Will he be in part of the first eleven? Will he be a backup player? Will he be a striker, an attack midfielder, a left winger? I'm thinking, if we do end up going with it, it might spell the end of Anthony Martial at Manchester United now. Martial and Memphis Depay are very, very similar players. There's not much in it. But Marci I could cash in on Martial as well next season and have an absolutely huge transfer budget to be able to really, really improve in some key areas. And Depay is natural in three positions, whereas Martial's only natural in one. Um, so he would give us that extra little bit of versatility within our first eleven and our squad building. I'm thinking I might end up going through with it. He's not on a huge contract. I think we're slightly less than 100k per week. And uh, I think it's a transfer I kind of want to do. Whether I go through with it or not, we'll probably end up finding out in this episode as long as he actually agrees the deal. Well, that takes us on to the fixtures since the last time we met and we have been on a hell of a run pretty much for the past 10 games or so. We beat Liverpool in the very next game after that Chelsea match. We beat them 2-1. Edinson Cavani brace. Divic Origi made it interesting with 20 minutes to go. Fabinho getting himself sent off later on. But we got the three points and hunky, everything was hunky-dory. We then played a heavily rotated side against Arsenal in the League Cup quarters and absolutely smashed them 5-1. Greenwood, James, Maguire, James, James. Dan James is a god. And he might very well be in our starting eleven for today's game, but uh, we'll take a look at the other fixtures. We then smashed Brighton 4-1 away from home in the Premier League. They went in front 19 minutes in through Trossard, but Dan James got the equaliser and then a Cavani hat-trick sailed the win. And finally, was a 3-0 win against Burnley. Dan James Brace. Dan James. I mean, we've got Mason Greenwood and Kingsley Coleman, who should theoretically be ahead of him in the pecking order on that right-hand side. His attributes are not as good as those two players, yet he is performing out of his skin. He's only started three Premier League games this season, scored four, assisted two. Only started one Champions League game, scored two, assisted one. He has just been a phenomenal player when he's been given the game time. So I think... For the first game today, which is going to be against Sheffield United away from home, he's going to get the start. I really need your help here, boys. Should I trigger Edinson Cavani's contract extension? He is declining. These physicals have already went down pretty significantly this season already. But seven goals in three Champions League games, 14 goals in 10 Premier League games. He has been an absolutely phenomenal player. And one of the reasons why I'm looking at the Martial and De Gea seals is because I think we're going to have to spend massive, massive amount of money to be able to replace Cavani in our starting eleven. Um, I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to sit on it for a little bit, have a think about it, but he's been phenomenal. Should he get a contract at 33? I don't know. 
So the transfer window has officially opened, which has left a couple of things to pick up on. Changing the season expectations, I think it's highly likely that we've got to qualify for the Champions League through the league stage. And that grants us only an extra £6 million or so in the transfer budget, but an extra like 200 odd k in the wage budget. So I think it's worth it. I'm going to take the money whilst it's on the table. Uh, we have got one player joining us who was already a transfer agreed by Manchester United in real life, which is Diallo from Atlanta. I've taken a look at him, and to be honest with you, he doesn't look like he's going to be a relevant player in our first eleven, at least in this season. So I will be looking to move him on out on loan for the rest of the season. So Sheffield United is the first game. They're not doing too bad in the league, currently sitting in ninth position. I have made a couple of changes to our starting eleven just to keep things fresh. To hear in goal, Wambasaka, Felipe, Maguire, Tellez. You'll hear me say that all the time because that's our favourite. A defensive area and I don't like to change that too much. Benton Kern, Pogba, Dan James on the right hand side, Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford and I'm going to have Anthony Martial leading the line. He really has to start proving to me that he need, needs to be in the team ahead of Cavani here and um, that I shouldn't sell him with the eyes of replacing him with Memphis Depay. Now I think I'm going to go through with that Memphis Depay signing regardless of what I think of Anthony Martial but um it's just too good of an option to not sign on a free transfer. First highlight of the game comes three minutes in. Sheffield United in possession in their own half. Hopefully we can pinch this and pounce on the counter. But Sander Burge with the ball over the top. David here is that to claim. Let's see what happens next. Bruno Fernandes wins the ball after a big punt up from De Gea. Dan James brings it down this right-hand side. Gets challenged in the box. Is that a penalty? I don't think that's a penalty. There's going to be a VAR check, I'm assuming. And I would assume that it won't be a penalty, but we'll have to wait and find out. VAR checking. No penalty. I didn't think it was, but uh, thanks for wasting my time. Oh, this could be bad. Harry Maguire picks up a knock. We've got Victor Lindelof on the bench, so he can come on for him. But Maguire is pretty, pretty good on FM21, and hopefully it's not a serious long-term injury. Really dull and quiet first half comes to an end. Sheffield United nil, Man United nil. Pretty dreadful from both sides. Let's hope at the second half. I'm not going to throw a water bottle. I'll just say I'm far from pleased. They get motivated by that. And uh, hopefully for a better second half here. I was just double checking. We were on key highlights. We were. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'd accidentally switched to only commentary. But we finally get ourselves the second highlight of the game. 62 minutes in. Uh, Paul Pogba picks up the ball in midfield. Martial feeds it. Or tries to feed it through to Dan James on that right hand side. It wasn't meant to be. Maybe James comes off shortly for Kingsley Coleman. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Or Mason Greenwood. Benton Kerr finds James. Back to Fernandez. Alex Tellez. Back to Benton Kerr. It's a good period of possession. We're keeping a lot of the ball against Sheffield United without really breaking them down. Dan James on the edge. Finds Marcus Rashford. Aaron Ramsdale with a save. Should be doing better with that. All right, we're going to get Edinson Cavani on. We'll take off Anthony Martial, who's had a dreadful game, to be quite honest with you. We'll bring on Mason Greenwood for Dan James. Uh, and hope that our two fresh legs can really change our attack. Expected goals of 1.41 isn't too bad, but it isn't great either. Uh, we'll demand some more from the lad. With only 15 minutes to go, this isn't looking great. We've gone very attacking. We've changed everything I would want to change to get back into this game, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen. An absolutely dreadful game. Really, really bad, and it's one that if it goes down at the wire in terms of a title challenge, we'll look back on absolutely gutted. Sheffield United nil, Manchester United nil, dreadful. Maguire is now out for four weeks, which isn't too bad. Um, it could have been a far, far worse uh, outcome for us. So four weeks, he'll miss most of the January period. We've got Man City and Spurs in there, but and Chelsea as well. So, oh, could be we could be in for a rough eight games or so. So maybe Memphis Depay doesn't join the club. Chelsea, Man City and PSG have all went in and offered him a contract. Um, I'm not going to go in and offer him a bigger deal, which is what I would do for someone who, like if Donnarumma actually spoke to me and then Real Madrid went in from, I would go in and give him some more money to try and convince him to join me. I'm not doing that for Memphis Depay. If we keep Martial, we keep Martial. One quick sale I thought I'd let you know about. Timothy fosu Mensa is going to join Brighton for three million quid and some percentage of profit from an XL. He's a decent little player, actually. Probably like a championship level right back, I would say. Um, obviously, he's not going to get now a team at 23 years old, but nice little bit of money brought in. So we're at the Leicester game and we're going to make some changes to the start 11. Cavani returns. Uh, Kingsley Coleman comes in on that right-hand side. Van den Beek 
comes in in the centre of midfield to replace Paul Pogba, who's been very tired recently. Um, and obviously, Twanzaby is not coming in. We're going to get Victor Lindelof in for um, in the injured Harry Maguire. Now, I'd love to win this game. I'd love to get some domestic silverware in our very first season, even if it is only the League Cup and the board are not particularly interested in it and they don't really care. I do care, and I want to win it. And uh, we've just got to get past Leicester to get ourselves a chance into the final. A quite first opening 20 minutes. We have ourselves the first highlight of the game, and it's Leicester playing it about at the back. We do win the ball in the midfield. Kingsley Coleman's pass is intercepted. But we win the ball back and we can work it once again with Fernandez and Benton Kerr linking up. Wamba Saka is overlapping on the right hand side. He plays it back to Benton Kerr. This bit, bit slow build up play and then we give the ball away. And now Leicester can break with Vardy, Shoudhury, out of Schengis, under, of course, on loan from Roma. Um, they don't have too many men forward, which isn't so bad. But they've found the pockets of space and Harvey Barnes. And now we go. Sloppy player in the final third, giving the ball away, has cost us. Dearly, Leicester won, Man United nil. Another highlight now, 31 minutes in. Leicester on the attack again, this time down the right-hand side. Castagna plays it in. We try to clear it. We do eventually get a clear, but Leicester retain possession. Justin on this left-hand side, he's been stopped. He finds tailmans, but he gets dispossessed by Van der Beek, and we can't get to the second ball. Come on, boys. We're not looking at the races in today's game. Kasper Schmeichel with a big kick up. Oh, Luis Felipe with a terrible challenge. of Vardy's in behind. Wambasaka with the last ditch defending of dreams. Leicester City get themselves a corner. Hopefully it'll not lead anything. Madison is the man to take it. Back post, we get a clear. Looks like we're going to have one more highlight before the end of the first half. Leicester once again in possession. They're causing us all sorts of problems. We've played dreadfully so far in this match when you look at the match stats. And Leicester haven't really played that well either. But as you can see, they're getting all the attack and impetus so far. Wambasaka with a decent challenge again. Not there for the second ball. Telemans to Shoudhury. He's got options on that right-hand side with under Vardy. The overlap of dreams with Vardy's there in behind. And Jamie Vardy could have had two. Look at the state of that. Five shots, zero on target. Our expected goals is dreadful. I'm throwing water bottles. I'm far from pleased. Oh, shouldn't have threw the water bottles. Everyone's demotivated. Who would have thought it? Who's playing terrible? Who's playing terrible? David here is apparently. Donny van den Beek can come off for Paul Pogba. Um, I think we'll get Dan James on for Kingsley Corman. Let's see if the god Dan James can save us in this game. Corner for us. Alex Tellez is the man to take it. It's cleared by Leicester City. Rashford can pick it up first though. Rashford keeps the ball in and cuts inside. Is he going to go for goal himself? He's not. He's going back to Pogba. It was... <sighs> I mean, we've seen this before. Thankfully, it didn't come to that. And we won the ball back ourselves. We feed it to Dan James, our saviour. He beats one, he beats two. He gets in the box. He goes for goal. Why is he went for goal? I thought that I thought this was over, getting to the byline and then shooting. I mean, it wasn't quite at the byline, but a cross would have been a far better decision to make there, Dan. Down the left-hand side this time. Bruno Fernandes picks up the ball from Alex Tellers. Rashford gets past one, gets past two. Can he score? He hits the uh, player and Paul Pogba with another dreadful strike. Bruno Fernandes is a difference maker. I'm going to have to keep him on. Uh, Mason Greenwood is also a different difference maker. We'll bring off uh, Marcus Rashford and bring on Mason Greenwood to see if he can make a change. But um, we might we might end up losing here, which will be our first defeat of the season. We're going very attacking for the last 10. Bruno Fernandes with a corner cleared by Leicester City. But Cavani will be the first man there. He can spread the player back out to Bruno Fernandes on this left-hand side who goes for goal and he goes wide. Well, boys, it's looking like a couple of dreadful results. Can Alex Teller save us? He plays it in. Cavani's there. He's 22nd goal of the season. I'm still not happy with the performance whatsoever. But we are at least back into this game and very attacking has worked. Teller's with a corner goes over all of the Leicester City defenders. He's unmarked in the six-yard box. Come on, boys. Come on, let's not go to extra time. Bruno Fernandes with a free kick. I mean, there's clearly something else happening here. Oh, it's going to be a Leicester City chance. Alex Teller's header is dreadful in the clearance. And Leicester City can get possession and mount their own attack. Under, plays it through to Vardy. Third time of asking, Jimmy Vardy. His 10th goal of the season. And we're going out the League Cup at the semi-final stage. Oh, I can't believe it. And there it is. Leicester City 2, Manchester United 1. We had a much better second half. 
but it was a poor performance pretty much all round. Um, our attacking players did not contribute in the past two games at all. Um, some work to do. So the Sheffield United and Leicester City game haven't exactly gone as planned. We've got the rest of the January transfer window to play through. I'm thinking I might bring you the last couple of games or maybe the Spurs-Man City game. We'll just to round out the January transfer period and play two teams who are, well, at least Man City's flying high. Spurs not doing so hot, but should still prove a tasty challenge. Is Jose Mourinho still in charge? He is. So we will be facing them in the next episode. Disappointing, hugely disappointing episode, but hopefully we can bounce back and sort of regain our form and get our front three moving again and start scoring some goals. But anyway, lads, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.